morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome everybody to this new uh, webinar, this new session in AGB Network. Uh, please let me know if you are all connected. Uh, hello, there is, we have Brian from South Carolina. Wonderful, you know, we know you, Brian. Uh, we have uh, people from, uh, as usual, from all around the world. Just please uh, chat there. Let me know if you are, can hear us well. Uh, if the video is fine, if the audio is fine. Hello from India. Hello, Sayan. Pleased to meet you. Just a couple of minutes just to give uh, the people the opportunity to connect. Uh, we have uh, Baptiste from France. Hello, Baptiste. Wonderful. Just uh, let me give you some uh, just two uh, concepts about this webinar. Okay. My name is Alfredo Pastor. I'm in charge of uh, uh, content creation in MGB Network. I work in an uh, Italian integrator. So I deal with mobile robots every day. And, you know, we used to make this kind of webinars where we invite uh, cutting edge companies to uh, show their uh, latest technologies, uh, some disruptive uh, solutions. Okay. Uh, today, this webinar, I will introduce later on, but uh, uh, just to uh, operational staff, uh, we, you have here the possibility uh, to write on the, on the chat. Okay. So feel free to. Uh, uh, pose your questions in the chat. The chat will be moderated, which means that we will see all the questions. And then at the end of the webinar, we'll have a Q&A section where we will be able to answer to all these questions. Okay. So uh, hello, Ariel in Argentina. So um, today uh, we are going to speak about something quite different, okay, uh, compared that we are used to because, you know, we talk uh, typically about mobile robot solutions. So in, from my point of view, I know everything about safety, communication, navigation. Uh, I'm quite aware of all of these things, okay. But when this new solution came, uh, uh, was proposed to me, and I say, oh, my, this is very interesting. Uh, today, we are going to talk about uh, remote operated forklifts. So imagine someone driving a forklift miles away, connected. I don't know how. They, these guys will explain us today. How do they connect? How does it work? How is it, how is it safe? So uh, I think that today we are going to see something very interesting that uh, is some kind of window uh, of the future, because I, I, I think that more and more applications will be remotely operated in the material handling uh, business. And uh, for doing this, of course, uh, we have the best, as usual. We have uh, in, on, on one side uh, this cooperation that is being done by Phantom Auto and, uh, and SIC to, to make these uh, op uh, uh, tow tractors and forklifts uh, uh, remotely operated. And uh, we have Aswin and we have Aaron that we will explain us all these things. Uh, and uh, it's a real pleasure for me to have them here. So I, I will not introduce you guys. Uh, it's better if you do all by your own. And just uh, Aswin, can you just explain who you are, what is out, uh, out of, um, uh, Phantom doing? And then Aaron, please just let us know what is your role in SIC, uh, in the SIC team and what are you doing? Uh, and then we will go ahead with the, with the presentation, OK? Sounds good. Welcome, everyone. Um, you can hear me loud and clear. Awesome. Uh, well, welcome. My name is Ashwin Lelendron. I uh, am the VP of product at uh, Phantom Auto, a company based out of uh, San Francisco. We have offices in Denver, um, Israel, and in Sweden. And uh, yeah, we do remotely operated forklifts, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Uh, over to you, Aaron. Yep. Hi, uh, I'm Aaron Schilke. Um, I am a part of the six safety uh, serial products group. Um, so I work with the, the various safety products that we have um, and figure out how to put them together to solve the different applications um, that we're working on. Great. So so we start uh, now with the presentation. Aswin, you are the first one, if I'm not wrong. OK, so just uh, let me just uh, so this uh, your presentation, give me a moment. Uh, I remember everybody that you can, uh, uh, and no, you are obliged to listen to <laughs> carefully to this presentation. And then please uh, put your questions there and we will be more than happy to answer to them at the end of the, in the Q and A section. Uh, so, well, uh, Aswin, it's up to you. Just, I just uh, unmute myself, uh, mute myself and go ahead. Okay, we are, is the, the show is yours. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Alfredo. And, and thank you to the SIC team. Um, we are um, Phantom, again, as I mentioned, we've got uh, locations all around the world. 
and um, we're just thoroughly impressed or, and with, with the SICK team and, and uh, looking forward to telling you a little bit more about what, uh, what Phantom does. And, and before we get into what Phantom does, um, I think I've just moved over to next, another slide here where we talk about sort of the problem. And the problem we're really solving at Phantom Auto uh, is around driver shortage. Uh, and this is probably a, a problem that you've read about in the news. Uh, there's a couple of headlines here about, you know, factories desperate for workers, 73% of, of warehouse operators can't find enough labor. I think the most telling part of this slide here is, is, is the, uh, the quote in the, in the middle section on the bottom. And I just want to just read that um, from, um, from one of the companies here. The only applicants we've been getting are middle-aged men in, the, in their 50s and 60s. Um, when we do get applicants, anyone younger than 30, they are usually uh, have no more than a month, and they stay no more, no more than a month. We are overwhelmed, understaffed, and without applicants. And that's in general what Phantom Auto is, is seeing across the, the industry as, as we have been in market now. Um, and, um, and, and why is this? Um, um, part of it is, uh, you know, trends with the pand after the pandemic uh, with regards to um, uh, uh, just demand for, for warehouse usage. Um, the second part is around uh, the gig economy, where some of these workers uh, who were previously working in warehouses are now doing Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, et cetera. Um, and, um, and, and in general, it's, um, I think we've just got people that have other options. And so um, this is, you know, you see this with FedEx, the senators talking about this, um, and this is where Phantom comes in. Uh, Phantom fundamentally does the following, and that is we solve the supply chain labor shortage um, with human-centered uh, remote operations. And I'll show you a couple of photos in, in, the, in, the, in the coming slides and maybe even some videos, but fundamentally what we're doing is we're moving um, uh, the, the, the labor to where the labor is actually available. Um, and I can give you an example where I was at a, at a customer site recently and uh, the director went through the multiple uh, distribution centers um, for this multinational corporation uh, across the United States. Um, and they said that, look, over the last two years, we've had turnover of like 200% uh, for forklift operators. And so the work is available, um, you know, in these warehouses. And you kind of see a, a mini visual on the, on the right-hand side of this slide uh, where in the warehouses of work is available, but what we're doing with, with Phantom is, is um, bringing people from different geographies um, that can connect and disconnect between, um, between warehouses from, from various different locations. Um, and, and the interesting thing about this is, is that, oops, let me go to the, this next slide here. There we go. Um, is that this, this is resonating with our customers. Um, we are deployed um, and uh, at customer sites and we're actively scaling today. Um, this is something that uh, our, you know, the industry um, is, is, is taking note of. Uh, one of the large um, organizations within North America for logistics, uh, the Trade Association, MHI, uh, awarded Phantom the uh, Innovation Award for the best new product in 2022. Uh, we also were awarded the best invention by time or um, in 2022. And so 2023 for us is very much actively scaling. And this is where partnerships with folks like SIC, and I'll get into a little bit about sort of our safety approach here shortly, uh, is just critical to, um, to accelerating our um, you know, product into market. Um, the other thing I think that's relevant here is, and I'll, and I'll just move over to um, the next slide, if you don't mind, Alfredo, um, with the video, and we can keep it on mute. Um, but what I want to show with this video is um, <clears throat> this will give you um, a window into just how, let me just move back, oops, um, of uh, that there's really no capital outlay from our customers. Uh, we can show up at a customer site um, within uh, and within minutes be up and running. And I'll, I'm going to play this here. There we go. Um, and I'm going to just keep it on mute and just sort of narrate. It's a very, very short uh, video. And you can see the controllers. You can see this ability to connect, an operator connecting from one location to another. And then very quickly disconnecting that same operator connecting to a whole new location, a new customer site. Right 
here uh, is, is where, where this ability to teleoperate. Um, so teleoperating be between warehouses, and I hope that sort of gives gives sort of a very uh, a visual between how our concept of operations uh, is. And then I think you got a, a brief window also with that last video around um, just the simplicity of our deployment. Uh, our deployment, in essence, consists of um, of, a, of, a, of a, a PlayStation controller and and some pedals, uh, but the real technology is this here. And and um, and there's a lot of words on this, but I want us just sort of maybe talk through a couple of things that's relevant. The way I see what uh, what Phantom sees, what what uh, what we do is very much how what this you know this technology, whether it's Zoom, Google Meets, what what they do for um, for meetings like this, so video streaming. For meetings like this or what netflix does for for hollywood movies phantom auto has been doing this for about six seven years now and that is video streaming for uh, industrial applications in low uh, network uh, environments and we are very focused on on the material handling industry uh, um, you know in this indoor environment and and the core technology that we have honed in and sharpened over the last several years is about uh, this ultra low latency, and and why is ultra low latency you know important? Yeah, of course you, you you're 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 carrying five thousand plus pounds of of uh, of product, uh, whether it be toilet paper or or pet food. Uh, we're carrying um, uh, you know pianos in in at one of our customer site uh, customer sites. So it's just it's all over the map. And then the other part of this is we're also in in fairly extreme conditions in minus twenty degrees. Uh, uh, Fahrenheit environments, and maybe for the Celsius folks, this is, uh, you know, we're in minus 30 uh, degrees Celsius uh, and lower. Um, and, and this is something that, um, uh, you know, we're actively improving um, in our capabilities. But fundamentally, the core technology is around um, streaming, video streaming under Wi-Fi, LTE, 4G, 5G, and, and many, many more options. Um, so... This, this is really how, uh, what, and I'll, sh I'll show you a couple windows of, of what it looks like. Um, but I want to sort of move on to the next part. Um, and this is very relevant to, you know, the topic that we have here uh, that we've been talking about here is, is um, how do we do this safely? And so first, let me just explain that, or just sort of contextualize that uh, safety is the most important value for us in, in, in our product development process. Um, and, 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 and why is that? I mean, maybe I'm stating the obvious here, um, but uh, we just don't have a person on, on, these, on these forklifts. Um, and uh, now, is it autonomous? No, it's not autonomous. Uh, but we actually think that there are a whole host of edge cases that our, our solution uh, with regards to remote operations is so uniquely positioned um, and and you know one example is uh, um, uh, the this ability to connect and disconnect um, so really increasing the utilization of our labor uh, but when it comes to sort of the safety um, the, you know we have this multi-tiered approach uh, to safety and it's you know it's it's with human in the loop so that's where the vehicle remains in in human hands uh, and then the, the second and the third stages, the second stage is very much where, where, where we partner with, uh, with SICON. And, and that is this uh, you know, using LIDAR and safety encoders. And, and Aaron will talk to you more specifically about some of the specific uh, products that we use in, in, in coordination with SIC. Um, but why is this important? Um, this is important because it, it has this ability to, to augment um, our human-centric view of of our deployments, um, and um, and, I, and and frankly, we, we just don't see that that uh, in in the market today. Uh, you can see sort of a, a bottom in, in the bottom right corner uh, where you have an operator, let's say you know next to my desk in San Francisco, uh, connecting to a forklift on the left hand side, um, uh, you know in the visual on, the, on your screen, connecting to a vehicle in Kansas City or uh, you know in Rome, Italy. Um, and um, and the the this is the sort of last part, the complementary measures where we can start to now augment the 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 screen and the and the operator view with things like protective zones or uh, we call this RDAS, um, and that is very similar sort of to the ADAS and inspired by you know in, in the automotive space and that's uh, advanced remotely uh, driver assisted systems. 
uh, things like uh, where your forks are um, or um, where, where you're, and I'll show you a video here shortly, but how the LiDAR fields are um, just sort of visualizing LiDAR fields to the operator to just give them broader situational awareness. move on to uh, our next slide here. And um, so, so what we're talking about here is this is this is where SIG comes in, the, the, the second piece. And I don't know, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger there. Um, so of course, a lot of our um, uh, a lot of our deployments and um, our our um, constrained and, and, and guided by uh, industry standards. So for example, the ANSI V56.5, uh, the AGV standard, or we've got sort of software design to, to meet uh, ISO standards. Um, and, but the obstacle detection, avoidance and collision uh, protection is something that, that uh, Aaron will talk about here shortly. Um, and I think I've kind of talked to you about sort of human in the loop and the complementary controls. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna, I wanna go to the, the following slide because I think this is also fairly powerful here. Um, and this is the visual I was, I was alluding to uh, before. Um, this is a, a picture that was taken very, very recently. Uh, let me just make sure that you can see it. Yep. Um, that was taken very recently in one of our um, uh, command centers where we have uh, a whole host of operators um, that are, can, again, can disconnect and connect uh, to, to multiple sites. Uh, and this is part of our business offering, and that is... Um, you know, one is the vehicles that we provide uh, with, with safety uh, and, and other off-the-shelf sensors. Uh, but the other part is what we call um, remote operators as a service. And, and this is fundamentally that what we talked about sort of before, and that is the uh, deploying labor where and when you need it uh, with a click of a button. Um, some, of the, some of the value pro propositions we offer uh, to our customers um, is around reducing labor cost. Uh, I'll, I'll get to the safety here in a second, but the, the third part is increasing operational flexibility and efficiency. Uh, for example, you can imagine um, us operating, we're doing this today at a whole host of customer sites where we're at, uh, you know, doing the graveyard shift where they just don't have workers to come in at, at, at midnight or, or three o'clock in the morning to set up for the, for the, following, um, uh, for the following morning. Um, and, and then the second part here in terms of the, the paradigm shift is around uh, re improving safety. There's a whole host of reasons of how we do that. And, and again, Aaron will talk, talk to you about some of those specifics. But from a phantom perspective, and this is what really gets me excited, is you think about um, operators that are not churning through um, a particular warehouse at a customer site. So i.e. where they come in, and we've, we've heard these stories where operators start at, uh, at one warehouse, one, one customer, um, and they, they stay, they get their bonus, um, they, they start operating forklifts, and then after their six, uh, six week or seven week uh, bonus uh, expires, they go to the next warehouse, which is right across the street, and then they do the same thing, and then they go across the next one, and they come right back to the original customer, um, original warehouse. And, and so why is that relevant? That's relevant because by, by keeping operators in, uh, in their seats for long periods of time, we actually do improve safety. And, and this is one of the things that Phantom takes uh, responsibility for is we're not just providing these operators uh, remotely uh, in, in more comfortable you know, environments, but we're also training them. And we're taking responsibility for, for certifying remote operators as well. And, and that to me is really, really um, exciting uh, because of the following point. You can just imagine we have we have a couple of people on our staff that, that do this, but uh, uh, wounded warriors, um, folks that are on wheelchairs, that previously could not, um, you know, operate a forklift, um, are in different countries, um, and are now you know providing valuable service to our customers, um, and and so this is the sort of the really interesting part of 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 the phantom business in my uh, in my mind, and that is. Um, you know, this, this human-centered um, remote operations where we are actually uh, in this world of, of uh, a lack of labor, we're actually increasing the, the, the labor pool, uh, not just because of uh, geography, but also because of accessibility. Um, and that's really part of, uh, a big part of what drives the mission of a lot of our um, people at, at, at Phantom Auto. Um, so I'm gonna, with that said, I'm going to move to uh, another slide here. 
that's to give you a window of um, I'm just going to let this play. This is this is a long video, um, and I see the questions coming in, but uh, so we can address that uh, shortly. Um, I'm going to just play this and hit mute. Um, and this is a long video, so I'm just going to talk over this. Um, but what you are seeing here is sort of this this um, different stages of of our operations, um, and our client has changed and is continuously changing. But what you're seeing is two different views. Um, one is our uh, a warehouse cam of, of one of our warehouses uh, where we test in, in San Francisco on the top. Um, and then on the bottom, you see um, uh, an, our operator client. Um, and this is, uh, in this particular example, you've got an operator in Denver um, that is controlling uh, a vehicle, this particular vehicle in San Francisco. And so this is very, very real. This is, uh, you know, over the last 10, 15 years, I've been working with automation at startups, um, at uh, big companies like Apple, with the government, at the Air Force, um, deploying drones. And, and what really excites me is that what you're seeing here is on this spectrum of uh, manual operations on one side, uh, autonomous operations on, on, on the other side. Uh, we see ourselves very much right in these in this in the middle with remote operations and remote operations we truly believe at phantom is this uh, underappreciated part of the market um, and our customers are telling us the same thing too uh, a lot of those of our customers have, have tried different solutions and now are coming back to us uh, partly because they see the pragmatism the the technical maturity of our offering and, and that's what you're seeing here in, in this particular video you're seeing um, a trailer unload and a trailer load uh, operation. Um, and, and this is one of many, many examples. You can kind of see the teaming here too. There's multiple vehicles operating in, in, the, in the same environment. Um, the reason that's relevant is, uh, you know, the, the and, and uh, connecting back to our core IP about streaming and how we have uniquely, and our engineering teams have uniquely um, built our technology stack to stream all this video and all these controls um, with um, uh, with very low latency. Um, and I just want to go back to sort of the workflow piece. This is an example of the of the um, the trailer load unload, but we can do um, operating at hike height with uh, with different vehicles than what you see here. Um, we can do cross dock. There's a whole host of and 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 also one what you're not seeing here is environments like. Um, like refrigerated and then much colder or hotter environments. And those are some, some of the sort of the most taxing environments for, for humans to operate in. Um, so with that, let me go back to our deck here. Thank you, Alfredo. Um, and actually that is um, a good segue um, into uh, to what Aaron is gonna talk to uh about that sort of that second piece around um the how uh functional safety how the functional safety system really is is for us and the last thing i'll say aaron just to kind of set you up here because i, I we truly believe this at, at phantom i just want to not belabor this point but really emphasize it is safety is a critical piece of our dna and our product development process how we design how we test how we validate and how we eventually ship into our customer hands because all the good things that I talked to you about, where there's a demand for what we want, our customers want it, but fundamentally, we we miss out and we skip out if we are not prioritizing safety. And and, and a big part of prioritizing safety is both internally, um, how how we track incidents, how we um, how we collect data, um, how we augment our existing sensors with uh, with sort of a, an independent safety system. But the other part is also externally. Through uh, through the partners that we work with, and and that's really where um, you know six um, both history and, and lineage and expertise um, is something that uh, Phantom Auto has really relied on. So uh, I'll, with that said, uh, Aaron, I'll transition that to uh, over to you. Perfect. Thanks, Ashwin. Um, so as far as um, safety goes. Um, We've been talking a lot about, um, you know, the safety, obviously, of the vehicle in different ways. Um, we've been talking about product that can go onto the vehicle and then different, um, uh, you know, concepts that um, uh, that, uh, that Phantom is uh, implementing um, kind of at the more at the vehicle level. 
um, and how that operates. Um, for, for now, we're going to focus more just on the, uh, on the hardware components that go into um, the solution um, that Phantom is implementing um, on, on these teleoperated uh, forklifts. Um, the cool thing about um, this solution that we are using there is that it's really a solution that revolves around some common components um, from SIC. Um, this is actually something that we call um, FE Pro, um, not a term that you're going to find elsewhere outside of SIC, um, but it is the um, it, it is kind of our internal kind of speak when it comes to talking about combining uh, different components to solve um, a, a more complex application um, simply. Um, and so that FE Pro system can be adapted to lots of different scenarios. Um, it could be potentially just stationary type applications. Um, it could be fully autonomous um, uh, applications. Um, and as we're talking about here today, um, we can apply that also then to teleoperated um, applications as well. Um, and so really this uh, um, uh, FE Pro system revolves around um, our controller, um, some different uh, safety sensors that tie into that. And really that whole system ultimately gives you the ability to handle the various signals from the safety sensors um, of the application, um, do some logic between those um, different devices. And then um, importantly for this teleoperated application is we are able to then dynamically change some of the safety parameters on the fly as that vehicle um, does different things within its, uh, you know, uh, course of actions, uh, the different movements, the different tasks that it needs to carry out. Um, and so that is, uh, again, uh, where we're kind of going to kind of dive into a little bit more on the component level here uh, next. So if, uh, if you could, uh, Alfredo, next slide. Thank you. Um, so we've got then uh, a couple of those main components that I, I kind of alluded to um, briefly in that introduction there. Um, the components that really go in, uh, into the uh, teleoperated uh, forklift uh, from the safety side of things is uh, the FlexiSoft, which uh, really is a, an expandable safety controller. Um, you can think of it as a safety PLC, but it's really a little bit, uh, it's, it's lower scale when it comes to just the size of application you're trying to tackle uh, with that type of um, hardware. Um, but this is where you do get that uh, ability to do some programming um, and do your signal interfacing. Um, we also have uh, some expansion modules that can be added on. Um, one of those being uh, an expansion card for taking in the encoder inputs. And so that allows us to then potentially look at uh, velocity of the vehicle um, and the turning or the steering of the vehicle um, at that current moment in time. Uh, we also then look at um, what we call our micro scan, which is really a safety laser scanner. Um, and so the safety laser scanner is the, um, you know, the eyes um, or the second pair of eyes on the application where the um, uh, teleoperator, um, you know, is kind of primary when it comes to, you know, making sure that they're operating the vehicle safely and they're, um, you know, noticing or seeing um, obstacles or people in the path of travel. Um, but, you know, just like a, a manned fork truck would be, people can become distracted, um, things might be missed, and we use the, um, the safety laser scanner really as that secondary set of eyes to pick up anything that maybe is missed um, by the operator. And you can have a suite of these. So you could have these mounted around, you know, multiple locations of the, uh, of the vehicle to ensure that you get full coverage um, around that full uh, vehicle. Additionally, on this application, we have um, some of those safety encoders that, that I mentioned um, with the, uh, the Flexi stuff. Actually, Alfredo, if you want to just go back one slide, sorry. So the safety encoders here, um, we, we do have two different types that are out there and these do have safety ratings. We're typically um, most um, um, uh, encoders that kind of have been out on the market previously have been more in the non-safe space. 
um, that, that, that expansion module that does take the encoder uh, information. It doesn't have to be from uh, these safety rated encoders. It potentially could be off of um, uh, motor feedback or it could be coming off you know, proc sensors that are creating a pulse. Um, so there's some different ways to get that signal in there, but to minimize the amount of hardware and achieve safety um, like Phantom is focusing on here, um, safety rated product like encoders um, can just minimize the hardware components necessary um, to achieve those levels of safety um, that may be um, uh, sought after. Okay, sorry, uh, Alfred, if you want to advance. So what you would find on a vehicle, just from a task standpoint, some of the things that um, you might be looking to do um, and, and where some of those devices may be um, located uh, on, on these vehicles. As I mentioned, some laser scanners uh, mounted down uh, at, at about ground level, looking for those different obstacles. Again, we mentioned that these have the ability to potentially switch the safety fields based off of those different real-time parameters, such as velocity and steering. Um, we also then have the ability within that FlexiSoft control to, to monitor those different signals. So obviously if an infringement of those protective fields that, uh, that um, Ashman was talking about, uh, if that were to occur, uh, that's gonna send a signal to either stop the vehicle, slow it down, or to enunciate to the operator that they need to do something uh, based on the type of field that is being infringed. Uh, we also have some ability to monitor speed, um, and that could be simply uh, based on the tasks. So if a specific task is occurring, maybe there is a limit on the speed. Um, if forks are up high with a load, you obviously don't want to be going too fast because if you were to stop, um, that could put some tilt into the vehicle and you don't want to have a situation where a load could be compromised when it's up high. Um, we also then have the ability to um, do some other safe motion functions um, to monitor, to ensure that uh, vehicle parameters are being adhered to um, during the, the normal course of operation. And then additionally, you can find um, some of those additional sensors. Um, and actually, Alfredo, if you want to go to the next slide, this will show that a little bit better. Um, the different types of sensors that you might find on one of these types of applications. So it may be more than what we've already talked about. Um, there may be potential for, you know, additional guarding, um, potentially side guarding um, if, you're, if you're worried about um, having infringements come into the field of view um, uh, uh, or the direction of travel. Um, up, up high where the laser scanner maybe is missing. You might have that side protection on there. Uh, obviously, e-stop signals feeding in as well as then the, um, the proc sensors uh, for potentially just knowing when you're at a home position so that we are, again, making sure that the real life um, uh, situation that is occurring is what's being then monitored. And so if you want to go next slide, Alfredo, thank you. So what else could we then do with uh, these vehicles? So with, with these vehicles uh, right now, obviously we have a, a good solution and Phantom is, is, is constantly kind of updating and, and, and optimizing um, their, their solution and, and the program that they used uh, for their safety. And that is something that they work with, with uh, myself um, and others on our team. Um, to help figure out how best to do that with the products that they use or maybe potentially other products that they could look at uh, in the future for maybe different applications. And so some of those places that, you know, this, this type of solution could be quickly and easily adapted to is maybe uh, we are talking now about smaller or uh, slower vehicles. And so there are other smaller laser scanners out there on the market that might be better fits for, um, for the application at, um, that, that we're trying to solve. Um, other products that are out there, um, we have outdoor rated uh, safety laser scanners. So if the, uh, if the task or if the application turns out that it needs to be uh, operating outdoors, or maybe it's just running outdoors temporarily from a facility to another facility, um, but it does need to go out, outdoors during that short little uh, jaunt. 
Um, we do have safety certified devices that are uh, also certified for outdoor use and really optimized to op operate in those more difficult and challenging um, environments. Um, we also have some new uh, products, uh, one being the Safe Visionary 2, which is a 3D time of flight camera. So very unlike the 2D laser scanners that we've kind of been uh, talking about up to this point, uh, this is a product that could potentially be adapted if you needed to then monitor um, some sort of three-dimensional space. And, and the most common way to think of that is the direction of travel of the vehicle looking outwards in the area above the 2D plane that's being monitored by the safety laser scanners so that we don't, again, see maybe um, things sticking into the, the field of travel um, like overhanging racks or if you maybe have, you know, some, you know, uh, you know, the uh, um, crane, you know, anything from a crane that might be hanging down too low uh, with a load or something like that. Obviously, the 2D laser scanner mounted at a floor level isn't going to pick those types of things up. So this type of product could be adapted or incorporated at a later time to potentially add more safety or maybe it's a completely different application where that's more of the focus. Um, and then lastly, some other things that could be also looked at in the future uh, with this type of system is navigation. So while we are talking about teleoperated today, um, they, uh, Phantom Auto is using a lot of hardware that we do use in autonomous vehicles. So if they ever did decide to make the jump to go to a uh, more of an autonomous solution, they have really all the infrastructure and the products to do that because all of the products that um, we've talked about up to this point with the different laser scanners uh, provide that uh, measurement data back, which could then be used for mapping or localization um, and then ultimately um, doing you know, its own path planning and navigation. Um, some of those things are also uh, available through SICK, um, being uh, mapping and, and localization. Um, but again, these are all things that uh, don't need a whole lot of you know, redoing the whole safety concept. It's really just add-ons um, as you need more complexity um, into the solution. If you want to go to next slide, Alfredo, thank you. So the last slide here um, is actually kind of a um, kind of a, a deviation from what we've what we've been talking about here at the product level. Uh, but this is actually kind of a good, um, just kind of a, a way to kind of um, recap how did we get here uh, with Phantom from the beginning. Um, when we first uh, started uh, partnering with one another and, and talking about how to safeguard. Uh, one of the questions was, do we need to safeguard these applications? Um, and I think very quickly, they, uh, Phantom Auto understood that, yes, these applications do need to be safeguarded, but to what level? That was still a question mark. Um, and so SICK does offer different safety services. And this is actually where we started with the whole solution was just doing the risk assessment. So determining what the tasks are, what are the associated risks, and then putting a, scale, a ranked as, um, a PLR or performance requirement um, for their safety um, to, to, to really put that on paper and, and do the work to determine what really is required here. Um, and from that risk assessment, we then worked to help design the safety concept and really give uh, and provide uh, Phantom Auto a base level program that would incorporate these different products that we've talked about um, to start doing those basic functions like field changing of the laser scanners um, on the fly based off encoder information. Um, and so that we could provide them something very basic to start with which really helped cut down the amount of time um, that they needed to put and invest into that aspect of things so that they could focus on other areas. And now that they, they've, they've, you know, they've grown, their team has grown, now they have teams very dedicated to, to, to really optimizing that very beginning program um, and expanding on it um, uh, you know, to, to, to have it uh, operate more efficiently, but also more safe, safely um, as, as more products and more um, uh, optimization from the different products can be incorporated. Um, and so that's, that's another way that um, you know, our partnership has continued to grow 
um, is really from these safety services through the continued support um, of us working together, um, both on their experiences and our experiences and, and knowledge sets um, and, and sharing that information to really get to them um, on the safety side of things to where they are today. So I think from, from the sick side, um, I, I think that that would conclude our um, uh, portion. And I think at this point, if we uh, are looking to answer some questions. Yeah, uh, thank you guys. Very interesting. Honestly, we should uh, have uh, four or five webinars because we could talk about communication, mission management, safety specific, uh, uh, pros, cons, applications, cost. We could talk about uh, hundreds of things, okay? But uh, luckily, we have here some questions, okay? Uh, I noticed some of these questions. Um, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, Aswin, uh, what devices uh, do you install into the vehicle? Okay, the, the, I think the safety part, uh, Aaron uh, has shown us uh, this uh, um, safety scanners, uh, safety PLC, uh, other types of uh, cameras, etc. Okay, let's say that from my, from my experience, it's more similar to an AGV, okay, or a mobile robot. So it, uh, it's easier to understand for me. Okay, excuse me, my, my lack of knowledge. Uh, but uh, from the, how do you, what do you have to install into the vehicles to control them? I mean, uh, what do you put in top of a manual vehicle? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And I think it's it's very, um, I kind of want to use this slide as a reference here. because. <clears throat> um, do you Aaron, want me to go to one of these slides? Before? No, 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 no this, this is a perfect one to answer this okay, question. Okay. It touches upon, uh, the, the, the first answer is it depends. And, and, and the more expanded answer to that is, is tied to this topic of the risk assessment. And, and uh, you know, a, a big part of, to answer the question of what sensors do you put on, what, you know, of the, of the offering that either SICK offers um, or just, you know, non-safety related sensors and what do you mount um, is very, is, is related and tied to the type of workflows, the type of applications the 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 risk that us that we phantom are, are willing to accept and not accept and also how we are willing to mitigate against some of those uh, those risks and the various sort of severity levels um and so I, I, it's one i want to just this is not directly answering your question right now but i think this is a good opportunity to answer and, and to talk about sort of how safety is uh, um, sort of incorporated into our product development process um, and so the first stage is sort of defining that risk assessment. Um, and, and a big part of that is uh, setting expectations with our, and I'm talking more specifically for our phantom side right now, setting expectations with our customer success, with our sales teams, with our customers of the type of workflows we can and cannot do at a certain junction of time in our product maturity. Um, so let's, that, now with that said, now let's say we've drafted that risk assessment and we've got this safety concept and system design for you know, for, for initial deployment of a brand new vehicle we're going to be taking on. Um, there's so many different levers that are, you know, at our uh, engineering team and our product team sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, control. And that is, you know, how fast we want to cover, uh, um, the, the type of workflows we talked about. The, uh, and, and so, so that's where, um, the, what are the sensors? Um, it's, it's really, and, and this is where we really have to answer um, the question based off of bomb cost is another driver, another constraint, right? How much, how much are we willing for, to, to make our business work and operate? Um, and so I, I think that there's no one straightforward answer to what are the exact sensors. Um, but uh, it's, it's a constantly evolving part. And I think the most important part to just emphasize here, it's, it's evolving as our product matures and as we learn more about uh, what we can and cannot do in, in the market. Another question here that I think is very interesting. Okay, uh, is there needed uh, some kind of a special license to be a remote uh, a driver? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so all our operators go go through our um, uh, and this is I'm, again talk from a phantom perspective. Um, all our operators go through our internally developed training uh, syllabus. Um, and, and we have sort of a process that is in addition to, to, to OSHA uh, standards and OSHA is sort of one of the, sort of the organizations that, that regulates, um, sort of, uh, safety on, uh, an operating, uh, in a manually operated environment. We sort of 
leverage a lot of those for a remotely operated vehicle as well. Um, so it's it's a combination of sort of being in compliance with uh, with the safety standards. Yeah, so sorry with OSHA. It's this risk assessment piece, and then our own um, you know proprietary training that I that I touched upon earlier. Okay, wonderful. Then uh, it's a, another good question, you know, because you are operating focus remotely. Okay, mm -hmm. what happens in case of a power uh, outage? Okay, if if the power is go is gone, what is happening? Yeah, that's that's a great question, and actually this is. I, this is a, a great example of emphasizing a couple points. Uh, so let me answer the question first. What happens in, in, in the case of a power outage? Um, it uh, First, our safety system will probably just to take over, uh, but in, in, and, and our whole system sort of just shuts down. It stops. And when I say shuts down, doesn't sh it's like there's a great, graceful sort of pause. It stops what it's doing. Um, and... Uh, now, now the other part of this is the, it, it could be there's power in sort of different, it could be the power in the vehicle, it could be power in the warehouse, it could be power in the Wi-Fi. So it really depends on, on how we handle it. But this is, again, some of those things that are handling our risk assessment. And this is, this is a very good specific example of, of sort of that, that concept of operations that we would define and then start to mitigate. Um, but one of the things that maybe another follow-on question, I think I saw this in, in, the, um, in the questions as well that's related is um, around um, connectivity. What if the network goes down? What if the network is very is, is intermittent? And and this is this is a good point to to use where um, there's not always safety sensors that exist for some of these things. But this is really where Phantom's core IP is, and I kind of touched upon this before. And this is really a credit to our engineering teams that have, have both our, our hardware and our software and our safety engineering teams that have uh, built this integrated system um, around managing the, uh, the intermittent connectivity. And you can just kind of to visualize this, imagine your iPhone or your Android or whatever, your smartphone, and the, and the little bars at the top, uh, right, where, they, where you have full connectivity and then suddenly you go through a tunnel or whatever it is where you, you have very limited connectivity. That's really where the Phantom solution excels. Um, in, in my humble opinion, or in Phantom's opinion, around um, you know relative to our competitors, is uh, is is sort of dealing with that intermittent co uh, connectivity. Um, and uh, so, so d d does that answer your question, Alfredo? Sort of yeah, two yeah, parts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. But this comes to another question that is absolutely uh, related uh, from Baptiste. Uh, what is the latency? This is also this is also a great question um, that requires more of an in-depth answer. Um, so, Sorry, I, I, I was. I, I, I thought it was so so simple. No, yeah. <laughs> but but it, it, um, nah, I mean, I'm joking. happy to share. No, no, this is this. But this is one that uh, I think uh, we're happy to follow up with you, uh, uh, Baptiste. Um, and um, because this is again, like I said, this is this is part of our special sauce. Okay, and um, one question, Aswin. Ah, okay, uh, we have the safety staff that is managed by the, all the devices, everything, all the system risk assessment that is uh, together risk uh, seeking you. Uh, mm -hmm. If I compare again with a mobile robot, what you are doing is the navigation, okay, more or less, okay. Uh, so you uh, substitute uh, somehow the navigation. But uh, how do you handle uh, order management? Okay, because if I think in a mobile robot system, we receive uh, uh, orders from a superior uh, software, okay? It's collecting this order, is giving orders to forklifts or uh, autonomous forklifts. There is also priorities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How, how do you integrate uh, with the ERP or with the WMS uh, in a given customer? Because, okay, you are driving, it's safe, you are navigating, you have the people, okay? But uh, how do you manage these missions? Yeah, uh, excellent. That, that's, that's a really, really good question and a very uh, specific, perceptive one to the material handling industry. Um, so you alluded to sort of the ERP, the warehouse management system, WMS. Um, so in, again, this is one of those things that um, the, you know, Phantom is very much sort of vertically focused on, on the material handling industry, among other things. Um, and, and this is why we have, um, you know, and credit to our customer success team here, uh, where our teams go out to a specific warehouse. And I'm not talking just a specific customer because we, we work with mul yeah. multiple customers that have multiple different types of warehouses in different geographies, right? And what we find is a lot of our customers at, have used multiple different WMS, ERP systems. So uh, this is where our customer success teams, where our engineering teams are working with those 
uh, with those individual warehouses. Um, and, and there's a fairly standard set of offerings with regards to WMS. And, and this is where we work with the, with the individual customers to, um, to plan out a deployment. And part of that planning of the deployment, there's multiple steps that go into it, is mapping their network, uh, identifying issues of whether it's Wi-Fi or LTE or 5G. But one part of that is how we take uh, instructions and orders. Um, and so we, we do have we do have a strategy, on, on, and, and this is something that we are shipping into market today. And, and we're constantly evolving um, with a whole host of some of these WMS providers. Okay. Um, Aaron, this, this time is for you, okay? Uh... And I will come. Uh, uh, Johannes is asking, uh, how do you uh, handle safety when we are going to uh, when we are lifting material? Okay, um, do you need the, uh, some additional sensor, or how do you handle this in the eighth? I mean, in the racks. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess it kind of d does depend on. If we're looking to monitor that we're and ensure that we're actually operating at the correct uh, height for the, the specific uh, task that we are doing, uh, if that's kind of where the question is coming from, I can kind of answer it that way because, yeah, I, I think that other sensor would likely be needed. Uh, one of the, the, I think I can think of two different ways of potentially doing that, it, uh, you know, attached to um, the racks or, or the forks themselves going up and down, you would be able to, you know, have a wire draw encoder or potentially some sort of distance sensor mounted um, on that. So as it goes up, you can monitor the real time height that is um th that is set for those 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 forks and that would allow you to really have the correct feedback to know if you are um within the correct uh, parameters per what you're trying to do so with that flexisoft that we talked about there is a uh, a safety uh, card uh, for expansion card that can take analog signals. Um, so again, from a wire draw encoder or again, maybe a, a, di a, a distance sensor that provides some sort of four to 20 milliamp output that could probably be monitored then um, by the safety system so that we can ensure that we are in those expected ranges of height. Now, if the uh, if the question is elsewhere, then I think we would want to take that one offline, but at, at least okay. at that point, hopefully that gives you a good idea. Okay, okay, just, just, uh, just so, and then, um, well, we are close to one hour, but we still have uh, for a couple of questions. I want to go because I saw uh, some question about the outdoor, okay? Uh, outdoor applications, okay? Uh, if we talk about outdoor, uh, there are two concepts, okay? The one is safety, okay? Clearly, uh, in this case, you need to have a special uh, devices like your outdoor scan, okay, uh, for the for the mm, mm, for the safety stuff, and then we have also the connectivity and the and the communication with the vehicle, what is uh, managed by uh, Phantom, okay. But for you, Phantom, does it change something if it is outdoor or indoors or not? Um, it's a great question. Um, and, uh, you know, what we've been spending a lot of our time today on this, on this webinar has been about warehouses and unlocking safer warehouses. Um, if you take a look at some of the recent news um, on, on Phantom Auto, uh, we are also um, partnering and operating outside um, with, at yards, yard trucks. Um, and so this is something that uh, this actually is, is, is a, is a, <clears throat> is a, a an example of leveraging the infrastructure and the architecture uh, and the institutional knowledge that Phantom has developed in partnership with teams like SICK for a warehouse environment to now a new environment outdoors. Uh, what we find is that, uh, again, that core IP about teleoperations, um, the Phantom IP about streaming in low latency environments combined with our safety uh, sort of culture, uh, our safety sort of uh, priorities, works just as well in in a yard truck uh, or an outdoor environment um so um it, it, did i answer your question alfredo yeah yeah i think i think yes yeah, yes of course um what about, if I, uh, yeah. sorry to interrupt but i also want to just touch upon one of these other questions that came sure, up sure. And I saw this earlier um and that was that's related to sort of outdoor indoors and that was sort of the knowledge of the plant layout. Seems like it's a critical part of navigation. Yeah, systems. yeah. Let me. I will. Uh, give me a second. I just publish for everybody. 
uh, what is it? Uh, 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 public uh, what is it? Uh, moderated. Yeah, he was talking about the layout. Okay. Uh, the yeah, the layout, and I think this this is a good. Um, while you're bringing that up, I'll, I'll just sort of echo the, the sort of repeat the question. Um, knowledge of a plant layout seems like it is a critical part of navigating safely and efficiently. Um, how is it handled with remote operators as a service? Uh, it would seem that operators are not infinitely interchangeable. And um, Phantom's fundamental belief here and what we are now starting to see that hypothesis play um, in, you know, in real time as we get out to more customers is that they are interchangeable. And part of the way that they are interchangeable, and, and Aaron uh, alluded to this sort of, sort of with a, with a strong safety foundation with uh, with regards to uh, our sensors, but also the encoders and how we design our logic and the field sets. Um, it also allows us now to augment our safety system with uh, with new IP. And we've talked about sort of the video streaming and the low latency, but there's another part of that and that is localization. And uh, and in fact, something that Phantom is very proud of, and, and, and I briefly touched upon that, and that's the RDAS, uh, the Advanced Remotely Driver Assisted System, um, is we are we do have um, you know uh, technology now that is shipping in our cu at, at customer sites today uh, that allows us to map the customer site whether it be a fifteen thousand square foot warehouse or a two million or three million square foot warehouse um, and that map is sort of an a priority it's inherited as let's say Alfredo you were logging in in your morning from Italy and then you logged off. And then, you know, I, I logged in from San Francisco as you were going to sleep. I would have that map already uh, built in. And let's say you parked it on one corner of the warehouse. Our technology allows us to inform me coming in the morning, in my morning, to know exactly where I am um, sort of from a localization perspective in that warehouse. So um, we truly are, um, you know, infinitely interchangeable. Um, and we're, of course, building and honing on that. But it also links to another question that came up, and, and forgive me for just extending this, and that was, you know, how we think um, what Phantom does is better than an autonomous solution. And of course, different people have different opinions, and our solution doesn't fit every need. Um, but, and sorry, Alfred, you had something to say? No, no, here you have this question. What's the last oh, yeah. one? Was the yeah. my last question? We are approaching the one hour, and I was saying the last question for you is why is better than an autonomous? So this is the. The, just to close the the speech. Yeah, and and again, I'll I'll just start by saying that different people in the industry see this very differently. From a phantom auto perspective, and I talked about sort of the spectrum of manual operations on one side and 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 room and uh, autonomous on the other side, in this sort of remotely operated space. And having worked with autonomous uh, vehicles now for fifteen years on ground, aerial, um, in the ocean. Um, what I see with what Phantom is doing, what we're doing at Phantom, is we really allow a product to be to evolve and to mature in real time with a multitude of edge cases. Um, and, and so we can get into market today. We can scale today with a remotely operated vehicle because we are very human centric. Um, we have a human in the loop. And, uh, and, and, that, and that also increases utilization of that human. So we can, you know, someone that is, is working in uh, Denver, for example, in a manual operations, they may not always have the work from a WMS system for, 20, for eight hours of a ship. But our operators can, if they don't have the work, they can connect to a different site and they can handle a multitude of edge cases. So I'll give you one specific example. Um, we were working with a customer site where we were teaming with the autonomous solution. Um, where we, Phantom, was doing, we were doing trailer loads and unloads. So we were unloading uh, trailers that were just coming in constantly through the day. And, and we had to set it up for, um, for uh, uh, an AGV to start to take the, vehicle, uh, take the pallets and put that away. And that was just how our customer wanted us to onboard uh, and sort of experiment with the, with the technology, with the Phantom technology. And uh, what we found was that our uh, this you know the the AGVs were expecting very precise locations of where the pallets needed to go, and we thought, oh shoot, we've never done this before. But it was literally within a day. It was just our operators were getting up to speed, and we found we can quickly train to that. And now it's one of those things where that same company is is to a certain extent asking us, hey, can we support them when their vehicle is shut down? 
because that, that's a common problem that happens with autonomous vehicles is that, and it's, I mean, I've, I've experienced this myself in product development where it, the problems occur. And when problems occur for us with, with a phantom uh, vehicle, our humans get right back in the, you know, in the, remotely, in the remote seat and can, and can get out of it. Uh, and, and that's really that the human centric, we really, really believe in the human in the loop. So I'll pause there. Hopefully that answers a couple of those questions that came up. I think that uh, uh, I think that uh, we cover quite a lot of things today. Of course, we could not go into detail of uh, all the technical and commercial stuff. Uh, one question: Do you have uh, do you support uh, uh, operations in Europe? I saw some uh, some question from the from the audience. Yeah, great question. Um, we are actively. We've definitely got customers in our pipeline from Europe, and not just in Europe, but outside Europe as well. Okay. So, uh, if you are interested uh, and have got um, you know workflows that you could see a use case for workflows uh, for, for remote operations, um, please get in contact with us. Wonderful. So I think that we finished uh, with, as I said, we saw a lot of things, uh, many, I, th I think new ideas, uh, I, one, very, very interesting. And then thank you all people, because as usual, uh, you've been very engaged and the, the, the involvement is, is always very interesting from your side. I will give you, I will send you a, an email, okay? Just with these two presentations. And then you will, I will also provide you the contacts because uh, there are two different things, okay? Uh, one thing is uh, from the end user point of view or integrator, I don't know what to say. Uh, for the Phantom uh, solution, uh, so you can contact, uh, I will give you the contacts from Phantoms guys, uh, so you can contact them for your specific application. And the other side, you will also have the uh, SIG uh, uh, contact for in case you are willing to uh, make uh, remote your vehicle, okay? So, uh, of course, uh, there is a huge job behind, but... Uh, these people has all the technicians, all the people that can help you to develop your, your solution in the factory, in the warehouse, or in your vehicle, okay? So uh, thank you, Ashwin. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, thank you, everybody, as I said. Uh, stay in touch, and uh, let's see uh, what brings uh, the new technology that we will uh, propose you here in AGV Network. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Alfredo. Appreciate it. Thanks, Alfredo. Ciao, Aaron. Thank you much. Bye-bye.